inside nuclear magnetic resonance arises as a consequence of two intrinsic properties of the nuclei. That is, yeah, you have the magnetic moment. So if I take a spin half system, for example, for r is equal to half, there are two orientations if this is the z axis, and if I keep the magnetic field along this axis, then the magnetic moment which has orientation in this direction recesses around the magnetic field in a in a fashion like this. Now this direction of the orient this precession will depend on the <coughs> side of the gyromagnetic ratio. So if gyromagnetic ratio is positive, then this will be like this. If this is if gamma is greater than zero. If gamma is less than zero, then it will go like this. Example of this is nitrogen. There are also some others. 
So mostly you have the gamma which is positive, but for some nuclei you can also have gamma negative, which means it will have a precession in the negative direction. If gamma is negative, it also means the angular momentum vector and the magnetic moment vector are opposite in direction. Although they are collinear, they are opposite in direction. <coughs> okay. And then we also looked at the same phenomenon in terms of the energy level diagram. In the presence of the magnetic field, there is an interaction energy which is represented as mu dot mu naught. And yeah. Can you explain the second piece we, uh, that uh, gamma, how, how does the uh, in direction of spin changes depending on the value of gamma? So orientation, we already discussed that. So it is, it comes from your uh, equation of motion, mu cross h naught, you write the dj by dt is equal to mu, 2 mu cross h naught. And if, uh, so depending upon the gamma, you will have a plus or the minus sign on the other side. So if there's a minus sign, it represents the motion in the opposite direction compared to what it is in the plus sign. So this energy. So which one is clockwise and which one is gamma is uh, if gamma is greater than zero, then it is in this direction. This is clockwise. Like this, no? no. Ah, yeah. <coughs> Anti-clockwise is taken as generally a positive. Clockwise is taken as negative rotation. And for i is equal to half, we have two energy levels. This corresponds to m is equal to minus half. This corresponds to m is equal to plus half. And the energy difference between them is delta E. In general, for i, we have many energy levels. Okay, 2i plus 1 energy levels. And the separation between these energy levels is the same. They are equally distant. And this separation is delta E is equal to mu h0 divided by i. And we also showed that this is equal to minus gamma h naught. That means it is the same as the precessional frequency. The energy difference corresponds to the precessional frequency of the nuclei in the presence of the magnetic field. <coughs> so if I have a i is equal to 1, how many states are possible? i is equal to 1 here, 0 and minus 1. So when one which is parallel to the wind doesn't have any precession. The one which is here, that will precess, but this does not have any precession because it is falling here with the z axis. Only when the i is equal to half, that's because an angle is in that manner, but i is equal to one, the two components have are collinear with the z axis, and the zero one, the m is equal to zero is the one which is here. This is a proconal to the magnetic field direction and that will precess. The precession of frequency depends only on the magnetic moment and the magnetic field. It does not change any other external factors like the temperature, pressure or whatever. It does not change anything of that. So it is an intrinsic property. Okay. Then we also talked about the lattice relaxation. Introduced spin lattice relaxation. The concept was the following that in the absence of the magnetic field, all your energy levels are degenerate, whether it is spin half or one or whatever, all the energy, all the orientations are degenerate. And when you once you put the magnetic field, they will get separated into two energy levels because of the interaction with the magnetic field for spin i equal to half and then the population will be distributed according to Boltzmann statistics. Determined by
Clearly, the lower state has high population compared to the upper state. But the question is, how does this rearrangement occur? So these are eigenstates of this thing system, and somebody has to cause a transition for them to readjust themselves. And these transitions are caused by fluctuations in the lattice. Anything other than your spin system is called the lattice. So if there is a, another spin in the lattice which is fluctuating in time, then it will generate a magnetic field. Well, whether or not it is fluctuating, it will generate a magnetic field at the side of the nucleus. So if you have a, your nucleus here, there is another nucleus here which belongs to the lattice and this one is fluctuating, is complete continuously rotating, then the field it produces at the site of this nucleus also fluctuates and this fluctuation can be analyzed in terms of the frequencies and therefore there is always a possibility of fluctuation, magnetic field fluctuation here, magnetic field fluctuation here due to the motion of this causes a transition of this nucleus from the ground state to the higher state. And therefore, this is called as the spin lattice relaxation. The lattice comes into the picture. It will cause readjustment, readjustment of the populations according to the energies of the two levels. And we also calculated. <coughs> Sir? Yeah. Uh, what do you say with fluctuating spin in the lattice? Yeah. That will create a magnetic field. That will interact no. with. It, it will create a magnetic field anyway. It is a magnetic dipole. So if there is an interaction, but suppose there is a, this is your spin mu1, this is a spin mu2, okay, then the mu1 by mu2 by r to the power q is the field created, the potential created by this at the side of this, okay. That this is the interaction between them. It is inversely proportional because this is the dipole dipole interaction. It is inversely proportional to the third power, the distance between the two. Okay, and this field which is created here, the field created by this nuclear, this magnetic dipole at the side of this nucleus, keeps fluctuating because of the motion of this relative to this, and therefore this fluctuation means the field is fluctuating. You analyze that in terms of the frequencies by Fourier analysis, and you will find a certain component of the frequency which is exactly at the energy difference between these and therefore that can cause the transition. You need a perturbation. You need a perturbation to cause the transition and this perturbation has to be magnetic in nature because we are talking about magnetic transitions and therefore this magnetic dipole fluctuation produces a perturbation and this energy, you have an energy component which causes the transition. Since this comes from the lattice, we call that as a spin lattice relaxation. And we also derive an equation for this, uh, the rate at which it approaches the equilibrium value, if n naught is the equilibrium value of population difference between alpha and beta states in the presence of the field. In the presence of the field. And n is the population different at any point in time, okay? Then we say n is equal to n naught to 1 minus e to the minus t by t1. We derive this equation. So you can see here, if there's an exponential uh, recovery of the populations and u1 is for spin like this relaxation time 
This is a characteristic time. It's called as a spin time. At time t is equal to infinity, obviously Mr. close to zero, and therefore you have n is equal to n yeah, naught. It, 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 it causes transition both ways. Both ways it causes transitions, but it will eventually reach the population difference, which is given by this. There will be more transitions from one in one direction compared to the other. But it has to reach the both one statistics. Sorry? What is the direction? No, direction. You have both upward and downward transitions. W beta alpha and W alpha beta, these were the two transition probabilities. Okay. So these transition probabilities are not equal. That depends upon the lattice. Okay. So because of that, you have the number of transitions going up or down is different. And that which is results in equilibration the way you want for N naught. To reach N naught. Okay. And W, you know, notice what it was because of the lattice. The intrinsic transitions created transition probabilities where there is an RF induced that we will see next. Okay, that is the same in both directions. Transition probability is the same in both directions. But when the lattice is involved, there is also population of the lattice which is involved. And because of that, this will be, they will be different. The W beta alpha and W alpha beta, the two upward and the downward transitions are different. <coughs> so which one is what? Sorry? Uh, which one is more than uh, W alpha beta? Yeah, so it has to reach the equilibrium population, right? Whatever it requires. W beta alpha is a transition from top to down. Beta alpha is up to up, uh, bottom to the higher level. So there has to be more number of transitions to reach this state. From, if you want to go from here to here, this population which I present here, there should be more transitions uh, to, to cause higher population here compared to here. Okay, so there is this, we'll discuss that more about the relaxation a little bit later. So there, is, there are parallel energy levels, parallel energy levels in the lattice. There are a whole lot of energy levels in the lattice. Because the lattice consists of n number of spins. Okay, there is an interaction between all of them and their population is dictated by the interactions there there you don't have a control over those populations. Now, when you consider this, the transition probability is a product of intrinsic transition probability multiplied with the populations in the lattice. Ah. So, because of that, there will be differences in the upward and the downward transition rates here, which results in equilibrating to the populations you want. Okay. <coughs> Okay, and then we also talked about another concept called as the spin temperature. Spin temperature is a convenient a convenient way to describe non-equilibrium state. <coughs> For a two-level system, we wrote uh, n, n alpha by n beta is equal to e to the minus e to the 2 mu, two mu h naught by k. KTS. TS is called the spin temperature. It is a very convenient way of represent the non equilibrium state because the numbers are much more easily digestible. The population numbers themselves are extremely small and the differences are very, very small. So you cannot remember those problems. But if you say the spin temperature is 10 degrees or 300 degrees or 200 degrees, it is easy to visualize how far it is from equilibrium. Okay? But if the spin temperature is negative, it would mean that you have an inversion of population. Okay? So why are you saying this non equilibrium? The population is not as per the Boltzmann statistics. At equilibrium, the populations are as per the Boltzmann statistics. You can perturb these populations by doing something. You can do varieties of things. 
So when you perturb that, how do you describe how far it is away from equilibrium? So one way to describe that is the population themselves, of course, you can write the population themselves, but a more convenient way to describe that is via the spin temperature. So okay, so if I say, moment I say the temperature is 20 degree Kelvin, it already tells me something, how far it is away from equilibrium. Okay? And if I say temperature is negative, of course I say it is inversion. And what it is if it is uh, if the populations are equal? What is the spin temperature? Sorry? If the populations are equal, what is the spin temperature? Is infinity. Is infinity. If if so when you have the two populations equal, it means it is a saturation. The saturation is described by infinite spin temperature. Saturation implies n alpha is equal to n beta. That would imply T s is infinite. Sir, yeah. then we can say that when the spin temperature is negative, that mm. means some temperature which is higher than infinity. No, no, no. It is, no. The sign is only negative. But yeah, yeah. So, like, um, after beyond, beyond so saturation, we can go there. It should exit the infinity. Yeah, so that it comes into the uh, negative end. Hmm. It comes into the You can't have, there is nothing is exi exceeding infinity. There is nothing is exceeding infinity. Infinity is not a well defined entity. Okay? So, if you want to get this as a number which is less than 1, this is a number which is less than 1, always, right? Because of the population, this is highly, more highly populated than this. If you want to get this number less than 1, this has to be negative. Otherwise, this number is always negative. So, what is the meaning of the negative? The negative also doesn't exist. Negative. No, no. That's why I said it is a concept. There is not a real temperature. It is not the real temperature which you can measure. Okay? So, it is a concept to say, okay, this is the, it's not the temperature of the spin system. No. When I say spin temperature, it does not mean it is the temperature of the spin system. It is a concept to describe the non-equilibrium state. It is a nomenclature, just like the charge or the spin. It is a concept. Okay? To describe how far it is from equilibrium, it gives some number. It is conveniently described by this entity, because there is nothing else which is variable there. This is the only entity which is variable. And therefore, if I have a number which is less than 1 here, it can only come if I have Ts as negative. So a negative spin <coughs> temperature implies Inversion. That does not mean it is the temperature of the spin system. Don't uh, confuse with that. 